Hi everyone and welcome to How Our Garden Grows. Today I want to take a look at some of the plants that I have for harvesting and uh, these are containers that I have been bringing in and out of my garage in and out of my house. <laughs> so um, definitely you need to do that with some of the temperatures that we get here in December, um, even November as well. But uh, it's about time to harvest these. We're going to do a Christmas salad for my family. And uh, these are looking really nice. I'm just kind of looking at where we're starting here in these containers. The celery's looking really nice. Uh, we're going to get some really nice, good looking stalks, especially for fall, at, you know, early winter, having these survive. These are a little bit thinner. Uh, but we're also going to harvest some radishes as well. And then we're going to get to the cold frame. So I'm going to show you uh, what we're going to do here. I have a tote here on my front porch, uh, filled it with about four gallons of water. This is just for an initial rinsing. What does tend to happen when I start bringing these into the garage is, um, and especially in the fall, all of the predatory insects tend to go away uh, that will eat the problematic bugs that suck the life out of your plants. And basically when those go away, then and the temperature stay warm enough and there's a host plant here like like all of these then you are susceptible to uh, a big infestation so i've been tr though i've been treating these there's some evidence of some some bugs here so we're going to make sure that we do a thorough soak a rinse and then another soak and then a final rinse before I start cutting in the salad. So I do four different rinses just to make sure that they're nice and clean. I don't use any other products other than water. So um, definitely I, I wanna be as organic as possible and these plants still look pretty, pretty darn healthy. So we'll go ahead and see what we get out of this. So with these celeries, I want a cleaner cut. So you can use shears, which I've used before, but I'm gonna use these scissors here. Um, it's going to be a little hard for me to show this on camera, but basically I'm just going to cut the base of each of these celery plants and we'll see what we get. Okay, so the celery stalks have been harvested and uh, you can see all that nice leaf growth. I do want to keep that. One thing about celery that I enjoy growing is I don't only get some pretty nice looking stalks and these look great. They don't look super hollow or anything like that are the leaves. The leaves, when you go to the supermarket, they chop nearly all of them off. Sometimes you can find a few stragglers depending on the type of celery that you buy. But for the most part, you're stuck with no celery leaves. So these are really great for flavoring any type of stock or uh, you know stews or anything that you might want to sort of flavor a dish with. They have an immense amount of flavor that isn't just jam-packed with primarily water, which uh, makes up a majority of the stock. But the stocks are also a lot more flavorful than what you would get out of the grocery store. So here we are with the celery. We'll just let that soak up. All right, moving on to our radishes. And these have done pretty well, just kind of surviving. They're not really growing too much anymore. Really, I was trying to get a little bit of, excuse me, uh, cooler weather to make these a little bit sweeter. Um, radishes tend to get really spicy as the temperature increases. So what makes it beneficial for some of these cooler crops growing them in the fall into the winter is you get some of these cooler temperatures that will um, promote sugars to go into the plants. So we'll go ahead and just kind of pull some of these. These are a little small, but that's fine. I mean, I'm doing these in containers and I'm very happy with already, I mean, this one's a little smaller, but you know, kind of look at some of these. This is a good size for a, for a container. I'm very, very happy with this. They're gonna be nice and juicy. They're nice and firm. So the even some of the freezing temperatures, uh, this container is actually frozen through and the radishes still look amazing. So I've kept it watered, kept it tended to, and so we're gonna have some really nice radishes to add to our salad. And this one's a little smaller, probably got a little bit more leafy growth on there. 
than I did. And these really work fertilized at all. I mean, I just place them in the container. The thing about radishes, they don't need a lot of fertilizer. If you tend to over fertilize them, they tend to just grow big green leaves and you don't really get the radish bulb that you want. Now you can eat the radish leaves for sure, um, but most of us are not trying to grow radishes if we buy the, the seeds to get those, uh, just the leaves. So here we go. Pretty nice radish harvest, I think. All right, we'll go ahead and uh, wipe some of the excess dirt and we'll get this also into the bath to soak. All right, so I'm back here at my cold frame. It's been kind of windy today. We've received 20 mile an hour winds. So I just uncovered this about two hours ago, kind of watered it down. So I wanna make sure the uh, carrots got what they needed. And actually, let's take a look down in here. Look at all those carrots. I'm gonna actually end up harvesting all of these today. So these look really nice. Um, I've got an onion in here, kind of growing, not a huge bulb, but pretty good for the winter. And uh, we're gonna be harvesting all these greens here. I've got Mizuna, uh, I've got a few spinach greens, which we'll be looking at. I've got a few smaller spinach uh, over there that I'm wanting to overwinter. So all these spinach roots are gonna stay in the ground because once we get warmer temperatures, more sunlight, these are all going to come back. Um, minus the carrots and I'm even going to leave a lot of the Mizuna but a lot of these are going to make really nice winter greens. I've also got some mustard greens in here that I will be chopping up for a Christmas salad. So let's get to it and uh, we'll show you what the bounty is. All right so here's the harvest. I didn't harvest all of the leafy greens. I just got a colander worth. Uh, it's going to be pretty warm actually pretty unseason unseasonably <laughs> warm for December. Uh, it is mid-December here in Colorado Zone 5, but just take a look at our barrel, and I'll be taking this indoors. You can see, and there are a lot of different, you know, insects <laughs> that still made it, even though I've been treating this, a lot of different dirt. So the importance of the soaking is to get rid of the insects, but and, and the dirt, of course, but also, uh, it's really nice to keep your produce fresh in cool water and hydrated. So this is really, really a, a good method that I would recommend using. So this is it. All right, so this is everything washed off and not a bad harvest for mid-December in Colorado Zone 5. We've got... Uh, the carrots cleaned off, the radishes look pretty good, celery's looking amazing, and a few of the carrot tops. The celery tops are already refrigerated and inside, so I'm just gonna bag all this stuff up and get it ready for the salad. Uh, same thing with the other greens, they're also in there, but again, not a really bad harvest, washing everything off. Uh, again, I did a pre-soak, a rinse, then another deep soak just to dislodge all the bugs. And then really you do that final rinse and you're just rinsing like you do at the supermarket. So everything looks very clean. Everything looks very edible and you don't have any signs of any sort of pests uh, or any sort of uh, other blemishes that you don't want in your produce. So thanks so much for watching and check out my other YouTube videos, and please like and subscribe.